Welcome back, YouTube family. It's your girl, Kate. I am back with another video. I know I've been gone for a minute, but your girl is back. And I have some advice that I want to share with you guys. As you can see by the title, today's, today's episode is going to be all about our first five steps to establishing and growing your business. I know right now, since this pandemic has hit, there's been a lot of people who have came, come across opportunities. And when I say opportunities, I mean people that have made more money than they usually would if they were working their regular jobs. I mean, that's awesome. It's awesome for the right person who's ready to take advantage and stop doing the nine to five, stop being an employee, and finally branch off and, and become an employer. Right now is the best opportunity to do so. If you guys haven't already seen, the, 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 the government does not care about the employees. They do, and then they don't. They care about the rich that employs the employees. Because if the rich, the employer, falls, then so does the employees that may employ over a thousand people. It is a trouble effect. So that's why they care a little bit more about this class rather than this class. You're in the wrong bracket, guys. If you're an employee, get out of that situation. Find a way, especially during this pandemic time, Find a way to establish yourself and get into a trade line that you think that you would like or find interest in. Start your business plan and get you a mentor and just talk about it, guys. I'm going to break it down for you in five steps on how you can do it and how you can go about establishing yourself. Um, no, it's not going to happen overnight, but you've got to start somewhere. Why not start now? When you're at home, eating, watching TV, do it now. Now's the perfect time. Go ahead and like the video and subscribe, and I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, step one is crucial. Step one is so crucial because it involves you mapping out your success. Yes, your success. That's why it's so crucial for the step. Don't skip this step. A lot of people are so eager to start a business that they end up skipping this step because they think they're being left behind. But in reality, you are only competing against you. Yourself. Focus on your personal growth and don't worry about the next person beside you. Okay? So make sure you establish your business plan. Everything should be within your business plan, all the way from accounting, marketing, customer service, and extra strategy, an emergency strategy, just in case a pandemic of such hits. You never know these days. <laughs> 2020 has thrown us a curveball. So make sure you take the time out to talk to a mentor, learn your trade, and perfect your business plan. It's not going to be perfect. You will make mistakes, but you at least want to have an answer to almost everything that could go wrong within your business. And you may be asking, well, how would I know what's all going to go wrong in my business? I've never done this before. That's why it's critical you have a mentor to lean on. Your mentor can save you a lot of time and a lot of money just by explaining to you what mistakes they made and how to prevent them. Step two. Step two is also important in my opinion because it involves you meeting with an attorney or an accountant and setting up your EIN and your certificate of formation so you're now you're registered with the state to do business. This is crucial. You can't miss this step. You don't want to be doing business and you're not certified to. Uh, big no-no. <laughs> and you also want to talk to an accountant because an accountant is going to help you establish what entity you would like to go over. As you can see, there's so many entities that you can choose from. So you do want to do your research on which one you want to go with based off what trade line you're going into. And the reason why this is so important is because this is how you're going to factor in your taxes at the end of the year with the IRS. And you don't want to be owing the money. You don't want to owe money to the IRS. You want the IRS to owe you money. All right? So make sure you get it with an accountant and or with a lawyer to help assist you with setting that stuff up. Guys, I always say this, that if you don't invest right now in the future or the foundation of your business, your business will crumble just because you didn't take the time out to invest. So yes, an accountant or a lawyer may be a little bit pricey right now for you. But invest your time. Find something that's affordable. Just don't do it on your own. It's all on <laughs> step three. Step three is also important because you have to physically take yourself up to a bank and go open up your business account. Yes, this is huge. You know, right now, getting a, getting a business certificate is so easy. And I can foresee it in the future being so hard. Take advantage of it now. 
it's so easy to open up a business account. All you have to have is your EIN number, your certificate of formation, a driver's license, a social security, or birth certificate, and bam, it's open. Deposit that money, you're already certified. Now you've got a business account where all your funds can funnel through for you. Your budgeting is a little bit easier now with everything going on. Um, so make sure you go, and, another, and also another reason why it's very important to open up your business bank account under your business name is because you want to establish a good relationship with your business and let them get to know you. And you also would like to go with a community bank. I know sometimes Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, they may be giving you extra incentives than the community bank would, but keep in mind a community bank is going to give you money way before a big corp is going to give you you got to think about it. These big corps are holding millions and millions of dollars for these rich. They're not worried about you and me. They're not worried about the small business owners. So invest in the community and speak with the community branch members. I promise you down the road, it'll be a lot easier to, to be able to get loans for your business by doing so. All right, step four. Step four involves you going in and setting up your business as far as a brand standpoint goes. So first you want to start off by creating yourself a host, somewhere to host your domain. After you've done so, you want to create your domain. Your domain is usually your business name is what I would actually prefer that you would go with. Or you could, of course, choose your own, but it's usually your business name. So for example, your domain would substitute for your email, your website, all your social media accounts. It would, it would be what people would see when they see you. It's your brand. It's what you, it's what you carry. It's who you are. So let's say you sell cars, for example. Well, you're going to find a host that's going to host your domain. So let's say the name of your business is Cars for Sale. Well, I don't really like Cars for Sale, but what if we do Cars for You? So you register your business under Cars for You, and now you have your host ready. So now you get a domain that says, uh, let's go for an example, your email first. Your email is going to be your first name at carsforyou.com, and your email would be www carsforyou.com and you would also link that same email and that same name all to your social media accounts because you want to be able to be identical and when you're marketing this is a very crucial step because marketing and people bringing brand awareness to yourself is where people are going to come and purchase and feel safe with doing so so don't skip that step Just take the time out to really set those things up and really think about it from a consumer standpoint the the efficiency of your website and the efficiency of your email and you want to be able to move smoothly as if you weren't even there to do so. So don't make it critical. Don't make it super, you know, hard to understand. Nobody wants to read through these little step five. Step five is very, very crucial. A lot of people don't know that in order to really grow your business, you will eventually have to borrow from the bank. And the reason why is because a lot of these business owners, a lot of the rich, they have a ton, a ton of debt. The only difference is, is they don't have consumer debt. They don't have liabilities. Their debt pays them. So let me break this down just a little bit more for you guys to understand. Let's say I go to the bank at my community bank that I was spending with for a year and I decide I want to take out a loan. Well, hey, how are you doing? I want to get a business loan. How can I go about doing so? Well, have a seat. Come in. Let's get you going. They pull up your business credit only to find out that you never, ever had a business line. You've never even established yourself a Dun & Bradstreet number. I don't want this to happen to you guys. Your Dun & Bradstreet number is almost like a social security to yourself. It is your business credit. You want to set this up as soon as you get all those other four steps out of the way because at this time now, in the beginning stages of your business, you are now going to be starting your, your credit for your business. So in a year to two years, when you're growing, you've got some clientele and you're ready to grow or you're growing too fast and you need money to keep up with that growth and you just don't have the cash flow, this will come in hand. As long as your personal credit is it at where it needs to be, your business credit will take you even further. So you want to go to apply at Dun & Bradstreet to get your, your pay decks number or your, your Dun & Bradstreet number, you treat it like your social. Your pay dex is what they use as a scoring factor for your business credit. So like for your personal credit, it would go from 100 all the way up to 800. Your business credit would start from zero and go all the way up to 100. Zero, of course, being the worst and 100 being the best. 
so it operates just the same. And the reason why I think this step is so important is because you want to be able to grow and you can't grow if you don't have the cash flow. So don't think to yourself, I don't want to get a loan. I don't want to have to pay money back. I want to do this all in cash. That's the wrong perspective to have. You're saving money and the dollars that you're saving have no value. Put that money to work for yourself. Go out and take a loan out. Put that money into your business, get a profit back from it, and also pay back that loan. Not only is that improving your credit, but now you're getting some profit off the money that you borrowed. At no money down. Guys, I have so much that I want to share with you guys about secret sauce that I have learned over these past couple of years. And it's, it is to come, but these are just the first five steps that I wanted to share with you guys about how to go about setting up your business and being successful. I see a lot of people that are wanting to go into business and just kind of don't know where to start. And this, I'm telling you guys, this, these, these five steps are what I followed to start my own business. And so far, I have been successful. I'm an independent insurance agency owner, and I have been now going on my four years. And I love what I do. I absolutely love talking to my customers and making their day. I love being able to assist them with what I do. And because I love what I do, my business has flourished. And yours can too. As long as you love what you do and you take the time out and you really invest on being the best that you can be within your business. And keep in mind, guys, as a business owner, at least for the first five years, well, maybe even forever as a business owner, you will have to be able to wear all hats within your business. And this can be kind of hard. So I suggest that when you're talking to your mentor, grill them. Make sure you ask all the questions you can because you don't want to look back and say, well, I didn't really take the time out to really investigate what it was that I was doing. I just kind of wanted to do it because such and such was doing it and it looked like a good idea. It looked like it made money. So you don't want to be that person. Take the time out, invest in yourself. Don't look at other people, work on yourself, focus on yourself. And I promise success will find you no matter what. And one more thing guys that I'd like to add at the end of this video, it does not have anything to do with the steps, but it does have something to do with manifestation. Create yourself a vision board for what you see for yourself for the next five years. If you want to buy a house, put that $3,000 home on that vision board. If you have a dream car in mind that you've been wanting all of your life, put that on that vision board. Children, vacation, put it all on your vision board. Manifest the things that you want for your future. And this is how you're going to do so. And really mean it when you say that and work hard and everything you have on your vision board will come. I promise you guys. For God has told us, whatever your desires, you shall have. All right, guys, that's all I got for today. Until I come back next time, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe, and I'll be back.